So in my first video talking about the service container, we sort of spoke about the container in terms of theory. Now in this video, we're actually going to start getting into the code and sort of playing with things so that you'll get an idea what it's like to work with the container. So that way you'll learn that it's, it's nothing to fear. It's literally a gentle giant. So switching to PHP Storm here, we don't really have much going on. And what we're going to do, we're going to create a class called service. And we're going to say that our route requires that service to be injected. And so when this, when the lifecycle goes through its process, we're saying, hey, Laryl, for this route, I need this class. Can you give it to me? And given that it's a concrete implementation, when we go to run this, certainly Laravel gives it to us. Because again, it's concrete. It doesn't require any sort of custom uh, re uh, resolving out of that container. And as you can imagine, with dependency injection, we could have you know different sort of classes that this service class could be dependent upon. So let's say we're going to create a constructor. Uh, we'll make it public. We'll call it service worker. And when I go and go back to that browser and I refresh, you notice it's going to inject that service worker into the service class that we, we requested. And, and sort of in this in this uh, realm, Laravel is quite clairvoyant because it's aware of those classes. Now, where you have to start working with Laravel Service Container is the moment you have to start kind of requesting things that it doesn't really know about or it doesn't have the ability to understand what you mean. And so what we'll do here, I want to use an example that's based on primitives. So a primitive, uh, in, now these are native to PHP, so you can have primitives that are like uh, integer, flow, array, you sort of get the idea. And so let's create an example here. We're going to make a class, or a controller, I mean. Let's call this, uh, let's call this uh, East, uh, user eastern time report controller. I don't really like the class name, but we'll run with it. So we're going to create a route. Uh, we'll call this reports, users, eastern time. And we want the app, HTTP controllers, uh, user, eastern time report controller, invoke. Make that. I'll clear up my little spelling error. And we'll just, we'll just copy this to make it nice and easy when we go to the browser. We're going to go to the browser. And right now, we're not really given anything in return, right? We just created a basic route. So what we're going to do, we're going to take our constructor. And we're going to create a variable. It's called time zone. And I'm going to make sure to make this public so it's available to the rest of the class. And then I'm going to sit there and say, I want to return my app models user. And I have a time zone column. And we can sit there and say we're this time zone, and we want the count, right? Well, when we go to run this, Laravel's going to squawk at us. It's going to say unresolvable dependency. Uh, you, you know, you're asking for this time zone thing, and it's basically like Laravel's going, hey, bro, uh, you're asking for a time zone. I don't know what you want. So we have to be able to tell Laravel what it is that we want. So to do this, we're going to go into the app service provider. We're going to say this app when this class needs a time zone to give it. In this case, we asked for an Eastern time zone, so we're going to call it America, New York. Oh, got my caps lock on. Now, if we go and refresh, you notice we have five users. Well, wow, it's like, so now we, we, have, a, we have a report that we can generate on demand. And then you could literally sit there and say, well, let's create a user, I don't know, a, a central central time report controller. So we'll call it central. And no, nothing's going to change. We've got to go add our route. Reference our controller. We're going to take this one. And when we go to run this, we're going to get that error again because it doesn't know what we want. So now we have to go back here and tell it. Okay, well, when central time requests for it, I want you to give America Chicago. We refresh, and now we get one. As you remember, Eastern time gave us five. And so as you can imagine, you could almost create a base, you know, 
time zone report controller and have both of these classes extend it, which when they run, they're, they're still going to return the same data. And so you basically kind of given some logic to your application that, you know, is saying this is the concrete piece of information you want to give it. And think about a primitive. Let's say you're using like an array and you're doing a query based on the, the, the span of time. So, you know, you do like where between, you can say when created that and you have to give it those, that array, which has the start time and the end time, you can create a primitive to return an array, an integer. You sort of get the idea. But this is a very simple example, just using primitives to give you an idea of what it's like to work with Laravel's service container. I'm going to do more videos. We're going to start kind of get into bindings and contracts and implementations. And we'll save those for the next video. But until then, take care. If you found this video useful, I encourage you to leave a like, a comment. Be sure to share. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Jordan K. Dalton, or you can follow me on YouTube at DaltonCast. And I'll see you on the next one.